good feeling of oneness with cup rubber. The Happy Hacking Keyboard Professional 2 is an iconic keyboard in our community. Whether you love Topra or don't care for it, you can't deny the impact it's had. The switches, the layout, this keyboard. If you are new to the community, you will probably quickly find out that this keyboard has quite the following. It's not a perfect keyboard, but it allows us to get closer to perfection. This is the HHKB Professional 2. On December 20th, 1996, the Happing Hacking Keyboard was released. Inspired by the Apple M0110, this keyboard was designed by Mr. Eti Wada. Sorry if I butchered the pronunciation, I'm just an American. The original HHKB started it all. The HHKB Pro, released in 2003, and the modernly well-used HHKB Pro 2, released in 2006. For brevity, I'll be referring to the HHKB Pro 2 as an HHKB. The HHKB was mocked up on a cardboard prototype by Wada Sensei in 1995, and a year later became a reality. It was PFU, a company owned by Fujitsu, who decided to use the Topra switches, which would eventually make this such a landmark keyboard. He revealed this when he was interviewed by Keychatter. When he submitted his original idea on cardboard, he also had a blank keycap mockup, which ended up being produced. He quickly found that this blank version was very popular with the students, and that's why there are blank options for the HHKB. As Wada Sensei said, hackers like unprinted keycaps. The HHKB was inspired by the Apple M0110, and the similarities are there. Interestingly, in Wada Sensei's interview, he mentioned that originally the keyboard was not to have any function or arrow keys. Those were added by PFU as they concluded commercial keyboards needed these features. The original prototypes didn't even have the alt keys or the GUI keys by the spacebar. We have PFU to thank for these additions to Wada Sensei's original design. Could you imagine though, the HHKB without, without its iconic arrow key placement? A little bit of clarification before I get into the meat and potatoes of this review. Topra is a diversified company working in several different industries. Tracing their history all the way back to 1935, Topra has worked on metal press products, refrigeration, air conditioning, electronic products, and more. On their website's list of historical achievements, their electrocapacitive switches or real force brand doesn't even have a mention. Even though it may not be a historical achievement for them, it definitely is for us keyboard enthusiasts. At least they do have a section on their site for real forces. Topra's first keyboard prototype was finished in 1981, and their website states they launched their office equipment business in 1986. The background information for Topra gives context to what I'm going to say next. All Topra keyboards, even those not manufactured by Topra Corporation, use electrocapacitive switches. Not all electrocapacitive switches are Topra. If you want to say the rubber dome, go for it. There is a difference between Topra electrocapacitive switches and normal rubber domes. The spring is one big difference, and the quality and design of the dome is another. Electrocapacitive switches found in Real Forces, Nova Touches, Type Heavens, HHKBs, Leopold C Series are manufactured by Topra and are called Topra keyboards. There are other clone switches out there and other clone keyboards like the RC930 and Royal Kludge, but I have yet to try one that feels as good as genuine Topra. Now that we got the appetizer out of the way, I want to preface the entree of this review with another quote from Wada Sensei. Quote, I pray the HHKB stays simple. Oops, because I'm not reviewing just any HHKB, I'm reviewing mine, and mine is a bit far from simple. The HHKB is a keyboard that has a reputation in the community. It's an iconic achievement and, a, and an iconic meme at the same time. The reputation of the HHKB precedes the quality of the keyboard. Not often are there keyboards who have reputations greater than the sum of its parts. You see layouts inspired by the HHKB all the time. My X60 has its layout inspired by the HHKB. The upcoming Fiel Pro is the same way. This layout started a movement. I love this layout. And I love this keyboard. Starting out on top of my HHKB, I have some beautiful High Pro Topra keycaps. The dual legend keycaps, as well as the red accent keys, come from the limited edition Just Systems High Pro keyboard. The keycaps are from a GIS layout, so some of the keys may seem improperly labeled, but I touch type so that doesn't bother me. There is an issue though. The GIS layout doesn't have a standard ANSI enter key and a spacebar. To get around those, I had to obtain an ANSI High Pro keyboard to fill those missing keys. Under these keycaps are standard Topra sliders that have been lubed for smoothness and quietness. Under those are 55 gram domes from a Real Force 87U 55 gram, and under the PCB, I have a small foam pad to help with noise. And attached to the PCB as well is Hasu's Bluetooth controller, which allows me to fully reprogram the keyboard as well as have Bluetooth functionality. The price of these mods add up very, very quickly. Ballpark numbers for this keyboard would place it at around too much money. 
what silly things we do in this hobby. When people ask me about my keyboard, I get to say it's a lubed 55 gram HHKB Pro with high pro keycaps and a Hasu Bluetooth controller. What a mouthful. If I wanted, I also have some HyperSure rings I could add, but I didn't like how they affected the feel, so I do not have them installed. All these mods beg the question, is it even a good keyboard if you're going to be modding it so much? Yes, an object can be good, yet people can still desire to improve it. Without this desire to improve, this hobby would be a mere shadow of its reality. The keycaps on top are all die sub PBT except for the Hypro spacebar, which is ABS. Topra doesn't believe in manufacturing PBT spacebars, I guess. The Hypro profile bears visual similarities to Sculpted SA, but the similarities kind of end there. Sculpted SA is very spherical on top, and Hypro is similar, but I like it much better how it cups your fingers much better than SA. This slight change makes a considerable difference while typing. If you type on SA and Hypro, you'll realize they're extremely different. I don't like typing on SA at all. I think it's garbage, but I love typing on Hypro. Another aspect which I absolutely adore is the fact that instead of two normal homing keys, there are six instead. Your S, D, F, J, K, and L keys are all deep dish. I presume they left pinkies out because they're your shortest fingers and probably don't sink as deep as your other fingers. This is the only profile aside from Cherry that I truly enjoy typing on. What isn't constructed to anywhere near the quality of the keycaps is the case of this keyboard. When you're paying $200 for a stock HHKB, the case is definitely an aspect that just about everyone and their mother will be disappointed in. It's lightweight and more disappointed than being rejected for being yourself. The plastic can creak, the case doesn't have enough rubber feet, and since it's so light, it's so easy to slide around. When you pick up this lightweight, it can be hard to believe it's $200. I resolved the sliding case issue by using my own rubber bump-ons. Another easy fix that a lot of people do is simply use a desk mat underneath their keyboard. The HHKB layout and layers take some getting used to. Your control key in the corner is gone and it's where your caps lock is. Your backspace is moved down to where your pipe backslash key is, and instead of a normal backspace you get two keys, your pipe backslash, and your tilde. Your arrow keys are FN and this weird looking cluster on the right. I promise, once you get used to it, you'd never want it any other way. Your navigation keys are right next to that because that makes the most sense. And actually, for all my 60% keyboards, after using an HHKB, I have all of their FN layers arranged in the same way for arrows and navigation keys. Yes, I actually do use page up, page down, home, and end quite often, Brian. The layout designed by Wada Sensei is very practical for day-to-day -day use while looking beautiful with the blockers in the corner. It gives the keyboard a distinct look that is practically unmistakable in the community. It's not the most efficient use of space, but who says the keyboard has to be? On the inside, I have 55 gram domes, which I highly prefer over Topra's 45 gram flavor. I wish that PFU decided to manufacture a 55 gram version of HHKB because those who desire this flavor will have to do some dome swapping from a Real Force 87U 55 gram. The 55 gram domes, combined with the lube sliders, feel amazingly tactile with a nice pop feeling. If you're inexperienced in the Topra ways, it's a different feeling that you might not fall in love with right away. I certainly didn't fall in love right away the first time I owned a stock HHKB, but eventually I learned how to stop worrying and love the Topra. While not everyone agrees, I love lube Topra. When done right, it feels amazing and makes the keyboard a lot quieter than it was previously. When people ask me about hypersphere rings to make their keyboard quieter, I recommend lubing the stems first since it's cheaper, will make your keyboard feel better, and make your keyboard quieter. If it's not quiet enough after that, then sure, consider going for hypersphere rings or the new silencing rings that KBD fans have. Never go O-rings. So, imagine the surface of water like a small pond or bathtub. When you put your finger on the water, the surface tension holds the surface together. You ever so slightly feel that surface tension. Then when you add more force, you break it and your fingers slide smoothly into the water. If that surface tension was a feeling of 45 or 55 grams, that would be Topra. And that's why I love Topra so much. For me, it wasn't the fairy tale love at first touch, but the more realistic sense of love. She worked me until I loved her, and I may have been roughed, but she didn't mind caressing my rough fingers as I typed all over her keys. The 55 gram domes provide the resistance I love, and if you've watched my old RF87U review, you'll know how much I love the tactility of 55 gram domes. When that happened, I wanted an HHKB with 55 grams. I was lucky when I got this HHKB, to be honest. When I found this HHKB with no touch sliders, drilled, 55 gram domes, it was all for a very, very cheap price on mech market, way below what you'd expect the market value to be. All I had to do, to add some lube and get me going. 
Of course, I did swap the sliders back to the original Topra sliders so I could use these Hypro keycaps. What was I saying about drilling? This keyboard isn't currently Novotouch slidered, but it was and can be done again since I still have those sliders. If you want to use Novotouch sliders on your HHKB so you can throw MX compatible keycaps on, you'll have to either modify your case or the Novotouch sliders for the modifiers. Mine has a plate modified by drilling holes for the side parts of the stabilized mods, like enter and left shift. It's a really easy mod to do and a better option than chopping off parts of your stabilizer. Lastly for my mods, I have a Hasu Bluetooth controller with a battery inside giving me full reprogrammability as well as Bluetooth if I so desire. While I have the opportunity to change my layout however I want through TMK, I don't. I love the stock HHKB layout and it stayed. I have Bluetooth, but to be honest, I rarely use it these days since this is the keyboard that stays on my desk. So how's typing on this high profile beauty? Typing on this high profile beauty is a better version of typing on an HHKB. So if you don't like the HHKB, you won't care for this. But if you do like the HHKB, this is one avenue of improvements you can make to improve your typing experience. And if you don't have an HHKB and are curious, this probably won't help you much at all, but I'll try to describe what I think about when I use this HHKB. The keycaps perfectly cup your fingers. As you dart between the keycaps, your fingers are taught to move by the lines that define the borders of these keycaps. How are your fingers taught? What kind of lessons are these keycaps imparting to me as a typist? To not be lazy. To not drag your fingers like you drag your feet. To type with grace and with a bounce. These aren't keycaps for the dude bro who slides his fingers to end in sentences without punctuation. These aren't for the struggling man who slides his right index finger to the enter key to post his home cooked meal consisting of deep fried ramen topped with Cheeto dust on shitty food porn. This typing experience is for the upper crust individual who knows how to use a semicolon, the person who touch types and doesn't look back or down. But at the same time, it's for the weeb crowd, just as much as it is for the elitist crowd. And that's because I'm using these dual sub legends. I could easily grab my plain dark ray high pro caps that came on my ANSI high pro, and it would go better with the black case. But at the end of the day, I'm still a weeb with a keeb. The only current issue I have with this keyboard is this loud ass spacebar stab, which I could fix in the future with some extra lube. I'll do that in the near future when I throw my 105 gram J Chan dome inside for the extra strong spacebar. Otherwise, I'm really happy with this keyboard for day to day use. I've had this keyboard for quite a while and I'm extremely satisfied with it. Day to day, using this keyboard works extremely well. The arrow key and FN placement means I can use those as my navigation keys with just one hand on one side of the keyboard. The control key next to the A key makes reaching for it easy and once you get used to it, it's a godsend. The closer backspace means my pinky needs to reach less and my hand stays closer to the home row so I can get back to typing quickly after fixing a mistake. Do I like this keyboard? Yes. But I recommend this keyboard in its current form? Only if you can afford it. My HHKB is reprogrammable. It's a great dome weight. It's wonderfully tactile and smooth. She's a classic keyboard and it feels like a step above if you put the work into her. She's fancy enough for a dinner party, but she's chill enough to hang out with you and your homies. Basically, she's waifu material. Thank you for watching.